get a £5 free bet every week with Offer Club from William Hill. Simply stake a total of £20 or more across the week on pre-match football accumulators with four or more selections and you'll get a £5 free bet on the Friday. Join William Hill Offer Club on mobile or online now. Scoot and Cassis Rifle TV in association with Macklin in my bow. We're in Texas, uh, ahead of uh, Canelo versus Smith. We're in the suite of Liam Smith's here. You're not sharing this suite, are you, Joe? You've got no, your own one. Not, no, 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 yeah. I've got my own one next door. You've got your own one next door. Um, yesterday, um, say yesterday, it was actually today, the start of fight week, had your public workouts. Yeah. Um, you've been around the big fights yourself before, but it's uh, a bit new for Liam, all this. Um, how's he been the last couple of days? Yeah, he's been good as gold. Um, we all came out on the Sunday. Obviously, that was a, um, a good thing Saturday night. Two brothers winning, getting the season off to a good start. And from a coach's point of view, it's good for me when you haven't been in the ring for a while and you get in there and you sharpen tools, you get back into fight night, you get into the habit and the swing of things. And uh, that was it. We all flew out here Sunday. Monday, we had a really good training session. Used a good gym down the road. A uh, fighter called Hector Vasquez, it's his gym. And uh, no, Liam had a really good training session. Today, obviously, we had the uh, media workout and uh, that went very well. Liam's what I always know Liam is, it, nothing would faze him. He's relishing in it, he's enjoying every second of every minute of every day whilst we're here and uh, now he can't wait for fight night. He's got a day off tomorrow now and it's very important on that day off. He's only got a couple of interviews. Like he rests and charges the batteries from travelling and recharges ready now for uh, the rest of the week because uh, he's got to get pulled pillar to post. Press conference Thursday, weigh-in Friday, fight Saturday and one minute you're here Monday thinking, God, this is a long week here. All of a sudden it's like weighing and fight night. I was talking to Liam earlier about fights like this. Um, we know a lot of fighters, trainers, we'll, we'll take a fight like this for the pure opportunity uh, um, that has come about. But you as a trainer, when this fight came about, how long did it take you to decide Liam Smith can beat Canelo, and this is a great opportunity. Liam was uh, name was in the frame before the Amir Khan Canelo Alvarez fight. They were looking at Liam Smith for it then. Uh, Liam's name was mentioned with uh, Miguel Cotto as well. And when them names were mentioned and they were put to Liam, we sat down and Liam like straight away, same as me, nah, Cotto, hundred percent. Canelo, nah, hundred percent. Well, snap your hands off for a, a fight at the minute. It's not a case of. Um, they were world champions. We're the world champion. Well, Liam's the world champion, and uh, he wants to be involved in the big fights. He wants to defend his titles against the big names, and for him to go out there and prove himself. And what I know, and other people with inside boxing know, what what a good fighter really is. I just don't think he's at the platform yet, or the opponent yet, to make him go through the gears. I feel he's won his last eight fights all by knockout without getting out of second gear. Even we're in the world title, defending it. And that's no slant on Thompson Kelly, the last fella neither, but that's how good Liam Smith really is. And there's days when I watch him spar his brother Callum, and I'm like, wow, watching these two go, this is like gold dust. There's so much more to come from Liam, and hoping this fight Saturday night now is the fight that Liam shows to everyone what I've known all along that he is a solid, good world champion. In an ideal world, again, I ask this to Liam. Would you have preferred it if Liam had had a couple of those names that he mentioned earlier on in preparation for someone like Camilla? Um, yeah, I, I suppose so. Everyone like an ideal world but boxing. You don't have an ideal situation, don't you? Um, you look at Miguel um, uh, Canelo, the, the, the opponents that he's had, he's been in with the best. And it's a who's who. If you look at Mosley, Cotto, Mayweather, he's a Trout, Lara, Kirkland, and Gulu Khan. He's uh, been in with some really good fighters. Um, people will say Liam Smith. It says a lot. It's Liam Smith's 25th fight. It's Alvarez's 50th fight. That shows you the the, the golfing experience um, in the big fights. But there's one thing Liam Smith hasn't experienced is defeat. Sal Alvarez has experienced defeat, and that's something uh, come fight night in the rounds are hard. So I think Liam's a very proud champion. He won't want to lose this and. 
I'm sure Alvarez won't want to lose again, but I do feel Liam's. Um, he's got like, he, I've just got a feeling Liam's got to do this shit. How much of Liam Smith do you believe Canelo knows about even today? Uh, I feel um, a lot of people say, oh, Canelo's taking it easy, it's just that. I do most of the think when the fight was made and the look there, and there's the world champ and that. Um, it was, I think, once we'd done the press tour and we came to London, I think they came away from that there thinking, we've got a serious challenge on here. They're, they're really up for this, they're really fancy this, they've got the vibe from Liam, the vibe from myself gone away and if you watch the work that they've been doing and the pads that they've been doing and the way that they talk, they've gone away and really studied Liam Smith, um, they know he's not just a come forward fighter, they, 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 they pay backhanded compliments and that he's a, a good thinking fighter, he fights like some Mexican, good shot selection, good combinations and the way that they talk, you know there's somebody there that's really done the homework and that's a huge backhanded compliment to Liam um, that they are treating uh, this challenge to win the world title, a serious one, and that they are hell bent on winning this world title. Chance of this fight lasting the distance? Um, I think it's got a really good chance. I, I, I feel um, Canelo's got to start fast. I think he's got to start fast. I think he's got to want to make a statement. I think they've got to come out, stand the ground, and draw Liam in the fight. They want to get Liam into the trenches drag him in and try and do Liam there. Liam's just got to be smart. And uh, I think after seven rounds, I've seen a few people say it as well, after seven rounds, this fight is very interesting. Um, Liam comes out, Liam's like a train coming out of a station, so it's where I get going. But you see Liam, he gets into rounds four, five, six, seven, he's beginning to go through the gears. If we're in this fight after seven rounds, then last four, five rounds, Liam's put his foot down and uh, Canelo last time made this way, it was Floyd Mayweather three years ago and uh, he didn't have many legs left. He'll say it's only a pound. That's a hurtful pound to lose when you haven't lost it for a long time and uh, we're really desperate to get Canelo into them championship rounds late on in a fight and uh, I think that's where our big chance of a stoppage is. There. I know people will watch this Coogan and slay me and go, fucking Gallagher, I lost it again. The gift that keeps on giving, fucking I think Liam Smith's got to stop Canelo. Well, that's boxing, and the same people didn't give Kel Brook much of a chance. I said Kel Brook will do very well, he'll do better than what people expected, but just couldn't think that he could hand, keep Triple G off for 12 rounds, and that proved the case. But I do feel Liam Smith is the right kid with the right tools, with the right temperament for the big occasion. And um, it happens to footballers. Look at the derby at the weekend Mourinho, a couple of players didn't perform on the big stage, took them off. I don't have that fear with Liam Smith. I know I've got the right kid to on the performance. Something that'll go in there and give me twenty percent more on top of what we've seen in the gymnasium. He, he's he's ready to go. This is his moment. How much of the the unknown factor about Liam Smith could benefit Liam on Saturday? Uh, you know a lot about Canelo. Yeah. You've probably watched most of his fights, studied most of his fights, regardless of whether he's fighting Liam or not. Um, but how much of that unknown, how could his Liam Smith factor could, could play a part in Saturday? Um, I, if you want to take this serious, that's what I'm saying to you before, Canelo, I do feel that they've took the threat of Liam Smith very serious. I think through the sparring and us coming over here to America every year, like we have been doing the last four or five years, the, 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 the people who have had Liam in the gyms, Freddie Roach, Virgil Hunter, Goosen, um, they speak very highly of Liam Smith and see Liam Smith as a serious threat um, to beat Sal Alvarez at the weekend, and that speaks volumes. People back at home, I listened to the Talk to Talk Sky podcast two or three weeks ago. They haven't got a clue, haven't got a clue. They turned round and just said, Liam Smith's got no chance. I just said to him, he's got no chance. Yeah, but this is the same person, people, that said, Gavin Reese has got a great chance, so tried to build a case for him to beat Adrian Broner. But then said Kelbrook has got a great chance over Triple G. Liam Smith has got no chance. I think people at Sky need to start looking at who they employ and what they talk as an opinion. Johnny Nelson's too close to home, heart to home, and too loyal and everything else to see strength, uh, straight through. And Spencer Fair in there the other day, his reputation on this, and it's them type of people. Johnny Nelson did an interview through the Comment Garden. Cal Brooks smashes Liam Smith. Johnny, have you ever been up to the gym and watched Liam Smith spar? 
I spend to fear it. No, go and ask people who have people whose opinion respects in the trade, like Virgil Hunter and Freddie Roach. Don't sit there and turn around and go, yeah, Jimmy Kelly, who's, lo who's losing to Jimmy Kelly and John Thompson? Well, that's like saying Sal Alvarez was losing to Amir Khan, but was he really? Now nah, the one they were just like, why are we running after him for the first two or three rounds? We've not got a game. Just let's take a time, let him stop running, then we'll hit him, and that's what happened. Same for Liam Smith, John Thompson, who's running around. Sooner or later we get him. Kelly, sooner or later. They're good fighters, and you think, God, you are supposed to be called experts. I thought you know your stuff. Um, so same with this. There, uh, it's. Uh, I, I just think the the people who know Liam know how good he is, and I, I feel myself it's a chance just for Liam to show everyone back home who's doubted him, but never really bothered to get on a train and come up to Manchester or come to a gymnasium. I had a bit of a rant in the changing rooms, Coogan, and, and on Saturday night. It was only because over the period of time, it was fight week, Coogan, and this isn't aimed at you or anyone else, but over the years I've seen press, I've seen you go over to Fiori's gym in Germany, I've seen if Billy Joe was fighting, you've got Billy Joe's camp, I've seen people, I've seen Amir Khan before he flew out, everyone Ricky Hatton, and I just thought, this is Liam Smith and it's Al Alvarez. This isn't Liam Smith against, I know there's 14 world champion and everyone's after a piece of pie, a bit of spotlight, but he's fighting one of the sports superstars. And if none of the press or the media can come to watch Liam Smith in the last week of the gymnasium, something's gone wrong. Now, I, I forgot to mention Box Nation have been in the gym and I've got to give huge respect for the Daily Star, Chris McKenna, who's come to the gymnasium and who's here as well. He's come out here through the Liverpool Decor here, the Daily Star here. But then Jeff Powell, who goes to every fight in Vegas, who's got accommodation and a house, I believe, in Texas, can't even come to this. So, it, yeah, I'm sure, and he was at Aaron Alvarez, and a bit the other night, because I seen Mike Costello, and he says, oh, good luck in Dallas. I went, yeah, Sam, will see you out there. He went, oh, Joe, I'm not going. I went, Mike, you're the voice of boxing. You go to everything that's big with a British fighter in America, and you're not going. I thought, wow. I said, but Mike, you were there for Alvarez, Cam. What's the difference? And at that point, then, when I went to change him and had me a bit of rant, I just thought, Joe, you know how the, 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 the kids are world champion, a bona fide world champion, Liverpool's first world champion in 20 odd years, fighting a superstar of world boxing. But listen, it is what it is. And like you say to me there, is it the unknown? Yeah, and I think we're like, nah, it won't be a big surprise to us, it won't be a big surprise to the Americans, but I think to the British press it will be. I mean this in a nice way, so don't take this the wrong way. No. Why does opinion seem to aggravate you more than other people? Other people's opinion, why does it aggravate you more? Because I feel we have to do quadruple what anyone else does to get any acclaim. So it's about not getting the credit you believe that you and your fighters Not me, have got. my fighters. Your fighters. Okay. No, and but I'm going to use you because you, you are the trainer, so okay. I can use you in... In that you and your... Yeah, okay, well, it isn't that though. This is not the Ring magazine, I was last year, Boxing News, so there is a claim of somewhere. But I do feel um, my fighters are in. If could get invited, let me put it this way. Peter Fury last season, okay, had all this, what we won last year, okay, two world titles, three British titles, European title, everything else coming through, okay. Peter Fury done that. Shane McGuigan had done that. Everyone else have done that, okay. They'll be getting a lot more than what's being done now, man. That's okay. If they're fighters, okay, I'll give you an example. Just hypothetically, Adam Booth had David Hay on this weekend, okay, in a massive fight against, at the time, going back years, Klitschko. Just let's hypothetically, he's fighting the superstar and superstars. The following weekend, they had George Groves fighting, let's say, Andre Ward. Would you think there'd be more done in the press talking about it? I've got Liam Smith against Alvarez and Anthony Crawler fighting for the Ring magazine belt. Not many British fighters fight for it, or the Diamond belt. Not much being, being said about the boys, do you understand? And I just think, why is that? I understand there's a big thing now of Anthony Joshua and all that, but I just feel we have to work that extra harder. My fighters have to do that little bit more to, to get the credit. I know, listen, no one um, has to like us in boxing, but it's good every now and again, and I get riled. Because I've been in Vegas when Ricky Hatton fought, when Joe Kawasaki fought, when they've all fought all over, and it's just what's gone before. And I go, well, it's my lad's turn now. They deserve that. 
And when it comes and I don't get it, I go, oh, excuse me, hang on a minute. What, what, what's wrong with Liam Smith? What's wrong with Anthony Crowther? I'm just bare big brother, just saying, don't shoot me. But I'm just, and that's how it is. So that's what riles me a little bit. And when people say, oh yeah, we're not coming out. Why? You, you, is it because it's not in Vegas? If it was Vegas, would you come out? Is it the holiday, the what? How, how could the journals not pay for this British fighter from Liverpool, part of an amazing success story of the Smith brothers as well? This will be the one that's fighting for the superstar. Callum's on the verge of fighting for world title. This is a, a brilliant British success story. How could no number ones? The number ones usually come out years ago, and it was Ricker, Pat Sheehan, Brian Wollstoneholm, um, Paul Haywood, Pat, uh, all of them, do you understand? None of them now, not even Jeff Powell. So what, what's got what's gone wrong somewhere? So listen, it, we 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 we've got to go on, and we're in the boxing of winning fights. But along the way, I just want what, the treatment for my fighters, what everyone else gets, as I call it, red carpet treatment, as it was. Now there you go. If Kel Brook was fighting Alvarez this weekend over in America, would they be coming over? Do you believe that journalists, uh, media? wouldn't come somewhere because they believe that the fight is one-sided and not in that favour of our fighter? Um, I won't... Because um, let me give you an example. No, no example. Yeah, I, but, I'll, give but, you, I'll give you a good example. When Kel Brook fought Sean Porter, Joe no one was there. Yeah. It was Sh Shamio who does the, the BBC yeah, yeah, Sheffield yeah, yeah. and it was me and James. Yeah. Apart from that, there was not one no. single... Uh, writer journalist out there that went there yeah. for for Brook no. Porter two years ago. No. Yeah. So I'm not saying if Kel Brook was fighting Golovkin in America last week, no, no. I don't. I'm yeah. not, I don't know how many people. Maybe people would have travelled out there yeah. for that. But I'm just giving you that. I, I know. I've already been there. I've been there with Paul Smith, Andre Ward. I've been there this year with Stephen Smith, Pedraza. I understand it's a changing time. It's very easy for people to do a story, internet, lift it and publish it. So. Uh, yeah, I know, I understand. It's just a, it's weird really because we were brought up in that era where you had press come to the gym, they took an interest, the journalists that came to the gym, they watched the fighters train, they wrote about them and got to know the fighters, does that make sense, Coo? Yeah. In them 80s and 90s, and that doesn't seem to be the case no more. And I think I heard Frank at Matchroom saying they had so many media requests for the fight last weekend, and where, where have they been for the last two or three years? So. All the Johnny come lately. It's just a shame that journalists don't take the time to go to the gymnasiums no more, like the old school, and get to know fighters and be around them. Do you know what I mean? Like they would do. Liam Smith is a, a great throwback fighter that would have been great in the Mickey Duff era days, fighting at the Royal Albert Hall. He would. He, he's a, a real fighters fighting man, and, and I think Frank Warren endorsed that as well. So, I mean, the matter in hand now for you this week, obviously is to mentally and obviously the physical side of it's more or less done mentally prepare Liam into this what is an absolute colossal fight um, whichever way you look at it um, what will obviously your sort of plan be from now until Saturday just map me out your days um, tomorrow um, personally myself I have a round table at 11 o'clock with the HBO and Eddie Reynoso and all them boys um, Liam Smith does a, a satellite thing at 2 o'clock, it's a day off for him tomorrow. I'll be um, up um, early in the morning, FaceTiming uh, back home in Bolton to the gym, um, watching Anthony Crawler doing his session on Thursday, that is, he's got a day off Wednesday, Thursday doing his punching session. Um, on Thursday, Liam's got a press conference Thursday, then we'll do a bit of a session Thursday night, Friday then, weigh in, and then fight day Saturday, and. Uh, Playing straight out Sunday and back for Crawler, Burton, Callum Johnson's got a huge tough fight for the Commonwealth title, and Marcus Morrison the following week. So, space of three weeks, seven fights, and uh, two headline acts both side of the Atlantic. It's a it's a heavy workload, but we're managing it well, and uh, I'm proud of all the lads. To be fair, I'm really proud of them. They've uh, they've done me proud, and there'll be a lot of people. I shouldn't whinge as much as I should do, Coogan, but um, I. Uh, I just feel sometimes that, that the lads should get more for the work that they're putting to. It's a hard sport, mate, isn't it? And I uh, said at the press today that we're involved in a sports legalised killing. At the end of the day, I'm over here. I'm responsible for Liam Smith, do you know what I mean? That's his mum and dad's child. They're grown men, but they're still somebody's kids and they're responsible. And I just need three honest judges Saturday night. 
um, and I want people to give credit where it's due and it's not much what we ask for because the lads are putting their lives on the line. I'm taking it's not really, I, when I say ideal I don't mean in obviously like a boxing sense but the timing of two back to back fights mm -hmm. that Anthony and, and Liam have got one week or the other, like I said normally you would have been in the gym this week yeah. preparing Anthony for next week. Um, so I'm assuming that hasn't that part of it hasn't been ideal. No, I I, I thought promotion wise it could have been worked a little bit different. Uh, originally it was Glofferkin and uh, Eubank, uh, and I think Frank had penciled in Manchester September the 10th. Um, and then when I heard that he hadn't, I begged Eddie to uh, put Anthony Crawler on in Manchester September the 10th, so that I could deal with the Manchester show first, and then we can get that out of the way, and then I could fly to. America would leave them for the 17th instead of leaving Anthony behind. But he, he wouldn't budge. He, budge. he was adamant that the O2, and now it was Kel Brook and thing. And I said all along, you've known that the 10th, why don't you go the 10th of Crawler? Um, help me out. Because at the end of the day, it's, we're all here for the fighters. And then the 17th, Liam, and then you do Brook Golovkin on the end of September. But it wasn't to be. So. Uh, just got to get on with it, haven't you? That's I feel sometimes the penalty you pay for being a victim of your own success. Or the victim of having too many fighters. Um, yeah, no, but I, I've had conversations in the past with Freddie Roach and have come over here and he goes, no, Joe, the promoters work with me, they give me the dates and I say, no, I've got this one and they go back and get a date that suits. He says, they, they, they work because they want to make the fighter happy and if they're not going to give the fighter a date that the, the trainer can't, give 100% with or it puts them at risk, they've not got to run that risk because it's their investment, as Freddie says. And I think to myself, well, why can't the promos at home see that? Me being away this week, Crawler, as best as we're doing, damages Crawler, but Crawler's at his investment, surely we could have done, swapped them around from the time. Does that make sense away? It, yeah, it, it's very yeah. political, we're not to call anything else, it is what it is. He's done a great job, we've got the, the WBC, the ring belt, but sometimes it could, uh, uh, help uh, help us out sometimes just finally just want to uh, touch on obviously last weekend um, Dominic Ingle food on the night uh, for throwing in the towel yeah. uh, most people I think we've heard from said that Dominic Ingle did the right thing um, let me just ask you you're in Dominic Ingle's position is that what you would have done? Very hard, it's very hard. When it was four rounds, and at the end of the fourth round, Golovkin was getting um, a bit sloppy, a bit heavy on his feet, just throwing shots, and Kelbrook was in there and catching. Something must have gone on and said in the corner then to do with the eye. Because um, I've texted Dominic since and just said, listen, great game plan, it was working. I would love to have seen that fight in rounds eight, nine, ten. Um, and the way that Triple G came out in round five, it was a case of Triple G never really wanted to see any later rounds in that fight. He was hell-bent on getting that job done earlier. He didn't want... Now, if there was any rumours to a nilness or whatever else, I'm sure he came out with a man on a mission to end that fight early, and he did in the fifth, and once Kel started getting caught a little bit more and taking a bit of punishment with Dominic, thought, Joe, what? let's live for another day, and uh, threw the towel in, and uh, like I touched on earlier, he's responsible for, for Kel Brook there. That's someone's child, and... Uh, no matter how old they are, he has got the responsibility and uh, he did the right thing uh, with the towel. And sometimes people saying he's waving the towel. Rule meetings, you're told don't throw the towel in the ring, wave it. How long was he waving it for? And it didn't, and he ended up having to throw it. And people don't understand so something. The fight can't actually be stopped from the towel. No. The referee has to acknowledge that yeah. that's what the corner's decision is and yeah. act upon that. And I, I, I think some rules as well, the referee can ignore the towel. Some some rules that the referee can ignore the towel, which is a, a bit frightening. Have you been in a situation where you've, you've had to? Use yeah, the Paul towel? Smith, Andre Ward. Oh, of course. And, yeah. I, I, and the, the thing is, people are saying it took ages, but if he was to throw in the towel at first, it wouldn't have caught the referee's attention. One Paul Smith or Andre Ward, the referee had his back to us, and Andre Ward had his back to us, so they couldn't see the towel. I had to wait till Paul come off the ropes, and then Ward was coming towards us, and the referee had my view then to be able to throw the towel to stop it. So me throwing it before it wouldn't have done no difference. And I think that's what Dominic was trying to do. The referee was out of his vision, so Dominic was waving it to get it and still wasn't. But as he moved into the position, then you could see that he had thrown it. 
you can't win as a trainer. Remember the what Gary Lockett had to go through with Nick Blackwell, sort oh. of the, the other way of you know. No, it's horrible. I, I, I messaged Gary Lockett at that time. It's hard tough. I, I haven't had a fight at Touchwood, but with Anthony and Kieran, that was a that was horrible. That to, 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 it just brings a, a sense of a, a dawn of realization. Like I said to you, sport can be dressed up how it is. It's a beautiful sport, times, but it's an ugly sport, and it is a it's a, it's, it's a license to kill. It's a it's, a, it's legalized killing, and. Uh, dress it up how you want but that's how it is sometimes and then when we come to people who want to take performance enhancing drugs that, that's wrong they should be banned for life that, they're try, attempting to be murderers and it'll come the day and it'll come we're not far from it that someone will get killed in the ring and the person who killed them was on something and it's got to take something like that to have a, a zero tolerance policy with people using it but the day will come touch wood it doesn't but that's what it's going to take to, to stop this do you feel like um, Chris Eubanks' tweet was unnecessary? Yeah, I do, mate. Especially after being in a situation, his dad's been in a situation where a fighter has ended up really ill, and then also with um, Young Junior has and quite very insensitive that uh, sometimes they just don't put the the brains into gear before they talk, do they? And uh, they need a, some PR person around them to sort of like uh, make sure they don't keep putting the foot in the mouth because. It, it, it's been badly advised there. Okay, Joe. Well, it's only been right here in Texas. Yeah, no um, thank you very much for. Uh, no, talk, cheers, Coogan. Listen, us. thanks for coming over. I know we have a thing, but it's good to see you there. It's good to see you, Steve Lilly, sir. Chris McKenna from the Star. I think there's somebody from The Guardian, but works in America here. So, uh, no, it's great. There's some. Uh, British representation. Matt Christie's coming up from the boxing. Matt Christie too. boxing news. Yeah, yeah, I think I think he's another one that that feared the rat <laughs> that, that <laughs> if he didn't come. So uh, yeah, so yeah, I messaged him for to say, are "You here or were you just winding me up?" And he said, "No, he's getting a connecting flight." So, you know, I spoke to Matt the other day. So uh, I'm really pleased. And you get the trade paper coming in to it, and especially the number ones. I call the number ones. He is the number one. Um, the, the editor coming for it. It speaks volumes, you know, you, you've got it in a serious fight here, haven't you? So uh, I'm grateful that they that, that they spent the money and the budget to come over here and get behind their, their own, and especially the likes like the Liverpool Echo as well. Mm. And another one, online source for boxing as well, That's IFL right. TV. They, they're apparently here, Joe. No, no, I just said that, Google. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, mate. So, well, you're joking. Uh, that's no problem. Joe, listen, um, I'm sure we'll catch up with you uh, again, uh, yeah, probably the press man. conference on Thursday. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, thanks for sharing your thoughts. No Therapy, this is Joe. No, it's um, just what I was thinking. I, I just seen to myself, imagine what it's got to be like. Liam Smith today was doing an interview, and there's like loads around him. And I just stepped back there and I just said to Macklin, I said, Joe, what, Saturday night after the fight, there's got to be no one stood around him. Or that line's got to be times 10 round him. Do you understand? The demand. And someone asked me today, uh, Liam Smith beats Alvarez, what next? And I said, well, let's beat Alvarez first, but I wouldn't be surprised if Floyd picked up the phone, sat at home and goes, do you know what? There's only me beat Alvarez. Who else to be fight? But the man that's just beat Alvarez as well, I'll fight him at light middleweight and... Uh, it's Alvarez's 50th fight. Maybe uh, we can cause an upset and then uh, get the Mayweather job. That, imagine that, Coogan. <sighs> but like you say, you've got to keep your feet on the floor and take care of business. I'll get slated now for you this. Are, now. You might do, John. Yeah, One thing at a time. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, anyway, yeah. when you're on a roll, who But cares? dream big. I always say to people, dream big. You've got to dream big. Think big and dream big. Joe Gallagher, thank, thank you very you, much Coogan. for talking to iPhone TV and uh, we'll definitely catch up with you later on in the week. Thank you. Thank you, mate.